Why did the pirates want to buy the juice box company? Because they wanted to sell the high seas. That's, that one's my favorite, actually. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about piecewise functions, but not yet. This, this, these next two videos are a little, uh, a little squirrely sometimes, but they're really important, I think. So let's just start with an example and say we got a scenic tour company and they're charging, uh, maybe they're showing us the Olympic National Forest or something. And they charge $10 per person. Okay, it's not the Olympic National Forest if they're only charging us $10 per person. Maybe it's like a museum. I don't know. They're charging $10 per person, up to 10 people. And if you have 10 to 15 people, they'll just charge you a flat fee of 100 bucks. So get a discount, I guess, if you have more than 10 people. All right. Um, so we could write the first part as a function like this. The cost is just 10 times however many people. Okay, the $10 per person, well, three people, that's three times 10, 30 bucks. All right, and so the question is, what would the domain be here? Well, we're not gonna have zero people. We could have nine people. And we're not going to have fractional people, so we really shouldn't use an, an inequality. We shouldn't use interval notation because there's no fractional people. So really the domain here would kind of look like, well, it could be one, it could be two, it could be three, all the way up to nine. Well, actually it says all the way up to 10. And again, if we really want to be great, we could add the braces, the squirrely bracket, squiggly brackets, but you don't have to include the brackets. And then the range, likewise, right, is just going to be all the outputs. Well, one person's going to be $10, two people's going to be $20, and so on, all the way up to $100. These are all the possible outputs. And we could also write the second part as a function, right? If we're up to 10 people, it's just $10 per person. For the second part, it says if you have 10 to 15 people, they're just always going to charge you $100. The input is the price. Oh, sorry. The input's the people, a different P word. And the output is the cost. So the second part is actually going to look like this function. The second part just says the cost is always 100 when your input is between 10 and 15. So if your domain here well, that's going to be, you can have 10 people, 11 people for this, 12 people for this, 13 people, 14, or 15 people. We'll add the braces. The range, what are the possible output values? What are the possible costs for the second part? The second part. What are the costs that make sense? Well, if you're between 10 and 15 people, there's only one possible output, $100. Anything in this anything in this set, any of these numbers, you're charging $100, flat fee. Okay. So we could write the function, we could describe this situation with two functions. Each function has a domain and a, and a range. But we're going to use our love of shorthand and write this as a single function. And that single function is a piecewise function. It's a piecewise function because it has two pieces here. There are piecewise functions with three pieces, four pieces. There are literally piecewise functions with infinitely many pieces. We won't have that in this class though, but look up a step function. Very simple. It has infinitely many pieces. Step function. Tell your friends. You can tell your friends my jokes too. I'm sure you'll become very popular. So let's define what a piecewise function actually means. It's a function where the formula that we use, right? Because these functions have formulas. This function says that the cost is 10 times the number of people. This function says the cost is always 100. Those are formulas. So in a piecewise function, 
the formula that we use depends on the domain of the input. So if, we, if we're in this domain, one to 10 people, we use this rule. And if we're in this domain, we're using 10 twice, which we don't really do. We can just choose whichever one we want 10 to have because it's going to be $100 in either case. And if we're in this part of the domain, we'll use this rule up here. And the way that we write this is with two lines. We write the function equals and then a giant squiggly brace. Curly bracket, curly brace. I don't know what they're called. And then the formula of one, in this case, our first formula is going to look like this and be up here. And then we add a comma, or sometimes people write the word if here. I like the comma. And then we say what domain uses that formula. So in our case, with the cost example, I just chose 10 to not include this one. And I'm also making things a little simplified and just using an interval. Technically, an interval is not right because we're not going to have 2.2 people. Not every number between 1 and 10, but we're going to just make it a little easier for the concept. Okay, so if we have between 1 and 10 people, not including 10, we use this formula that the cost is just 10 times the number of people. And if we have 10 or more people, cost is going to be 100. And again, really what this should say is between 10 and 15, because the example did say, hey, don't bring more than 15 people on this tour. All right. And so that's what a piecewise function kind of looks like. We're going to use that in the next example and say, okay, we got a cell phone company and they're using the function below to, to determine the cost in dollars for G gigabytes in data. I didn't update this question. I do still have a limited data plan, by the way. This does still exist at the, at the time I'm recording this video, but most people have unlimited data. Anyway, so the cost is C for G gigabytes of data. So this says that if G is between zero and two, so if you use between no gigabytes of data and two gigabytes of data, you're going to be charged $25. Oh, that's, that's the part A. Explain what this means in words. All right, well, if you use up to two gigs of data, you're going to pay 25 bucks. Also much cheaper than my cell phone bill. Anyway, um, this, this example I think was written in like 2010 or something. Back when the year world was young. Anyway, so what's the second piece mean? The second piece is harder to figure out. But this part is not as hard. If you're using at least two. If you... If you use at least two gigabytes of data, you pay, okay, let's figure this out. Maybe it's not obvious what this is. Probably not obvious to you guys. I've done a lot of these problems. So, oh, I'm drawing the arrow to the wrong place. Let's look at this second formula. Let's just plug in some numbers. Let's make a little table what, for different G and different costs. And the table, I think, is going to make it a little clearer what's going on. So if we use two gigs of data, that's G equals two. We are going to use this piece. This is the piece that includes two. If we use two gigs of data, we're going to use this formula and plug in two. If we plug in two, what happens? Well, let's copy the formula down into our calculator. 25 plus g, sorry, plus 10, times g minus 2. So if we use 2 gigs of data, that's just plugging in 2 here. It says we're going to spend, our cost is still going to be 25 bucks. Let's write that down. What happens if we spend 3 gigs? Well, let's just replace the g with a 3. 
35 bucks. If we use four gigs of data, let's keep going until we figure out the pattern. 45. Seeing the pattern yet? Five gigs. Keep tabbing to the wrong place. It's going to be 55. So what's happening is that if we use up to two gigs, we pay 25 bucks. But any amount that we go over, we're going to have to pay $10 per gig. We go over by one, we have 10 extra. Go over by two, we have 20 extra. $10 per gig. And that's what this piecewise function means in words. <sighs> I left the $25 out of the box. There we go. Excuse me. With that in mind, let's find the cost of using one and a half gigs of data. Well, we can just use what we boxed here to get the answer, but let's get practice with piecewise functions. Okay. So if G is 1.5, which piece do we use? Which one of these inequalities does 1.5 lie in? The answer is going to be this one. 1. 1.5 is between 0 and 2. They use the first piece. First piece says you're, it's always $25. So that's going to be our answer. Cost, 25 bucks. Which again, agrees with what we wrote here. If you use up to two gigs, you're paying 25 bucks. We used one and a half gigs. Yeah, pay 25 bucks. Evaluate C of four. Again, four is our G. That's our input. So we again have to go over here and see which piece does four lie in. Is four between zero and two? No. Is four bigger than or equal to two? Yup. So four is bigger than or equal to two is at least two. They use the second piece. And that says 25 plus 10 times G minus two. You get four, 25 plus 10 times G, which is four minus two. And we found that earlier with a calculator to be 45 bucks. So that's the cost of using four gigs. Again, there's more practice using functions and practice using these piecewise functions. Solve C of G is 35. So remember, that's when we know the output, which is the cost here. And we want the input which is the gigs of data that we're using. So how many gigs of data do we have to use for us to be charged $35? We actually already kind of answered that. Cost is 35 when the input is three gigs. All right, so when we use three gigs of data, There we go. No, try it now on these ones. The next video is where things get extra spicy. We get to graph it, but we'll only be graphing simpler things, but it's fun. Good luck. Bye-bye.